I am speaking to forceful men and I'm speaking to forceful women who will not let the devil take them for granted, who will not allow the enemy to pull at them, who will not allow the devil to push them around. Let the forceful men arise. Let the forceful women arise. Take hold of your sword. Take hold of your weapons. Take hold of your weaponry. Take hold of the blood of Jesus. Take hold of the name of Jesus. Take hold of the word of God and tell the devil, you cannot touch me. I am on you cannot mess with me because nobody messes with me I am the child of the Most High God I am a servant of the Most High God and the Spirit of God is resident in the inside of me if you believe it lift up your hands and shout Ororo Ororo or your Bibles to the book of Matthew Matthew chapter 11 we'll read the verse number 1 and then we'll jump to the verse number 12 I want you to give it to me this particular one in NIV this scripture in NIV Amen Matthew 11 the verse number 1 and then we'll jump to the verse 12 Hallelujah you can write it down and just look on the monitors after Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. Verse 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. Use the, I want you to say that with me. Forcefully advancing. Forcefully advancing. Or say that again. Forcefully advancing. forcefully advancing. And forceful men lay hold of it. Say that with me. And forceful men lay hold of it. Okay. I want us to repeat the verse 12 together. We are going to read it together. Ready? Go. The kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. Hallelujah. I want to teach on a subject of entitled forceful men. Forceful men. Look at somebody and tell the person I'm a forceful man. If you're a woman, you tell them I'm a forceful woman. <laughs> Please, you may be seated in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. In this teaching, when I use forceful men, I'm referring to men and women. And so I want you to bear with me when i use men i'm referring to both genders amen. amen let's pray heavenly father i pray in the name of jesus father tonight is the day three of the prophetic end time army conference father your people are gathered in your presence tonight not to hear the voice of a man but father to hear your voice i pray in the name of jesus that your word will go unhindered your word will go unblocked your word will have a free course let your word permeate into every heart that hears the sound of my voice father i ask that you will take hold of my vocal cords and take hold of my being and Father, let me not be the one speaking, but let it be you that is speaking through me as an instrument and as a vessel. Anything that I will say that is me, let me not say it. Father, let me speak as your mouthpiece and let me speak as your oracle. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody say amen. amen. Somebody say forceful man. Forceful. Somebody say forceful man. forceful man. You see, the times that we are in, we are not, God is not looking for people who are sluggish. People who are dull. People who are waiting for things to happen. God is not looking for such people. If you are such a person, you cannot be enlisted into this end time army. God is not looking for people who will sit back for things to come to them. God is looking for people who are vibrant. God is looking for people who are aggressive. Yes, God is looking for people who are forceful. That if the things are not coming to them, they go and take it. They go and get it. You see, those are the kinds of people that God is raising in this end time. And these are the kinds of people that have been enlisted into the prophetic end time army. They are aggressive people. They are forceful people. They are tenacious people. They are audacious people. They are people that operate and function in boldaciousness. They are people that cannot be intimidated. They are people that cannot be petrified by circumstances or situation or conditions. They are people who take their stand. They are people who operate by their conviction. They are people who stand on the authority of the word of God and they don't care what kind of arrows the enemy throws at them and they don't care what kind of opposition and resistance that comes from the kingdom of darkness. As long as they are determined to take it, they will not relent until they take it. They will not relent. They will take their destiny. They will take their prophetic word. They will take their blessing. They will take their breakthrough. They will take their miracle. They will take anything and everything that belongs to them because they will not shut their mouth. They will not sit down quietly. They will not allow either spirit or men to intimidate them. They will take the battle to the gates of the enemy. They will not wait for the enemy to attack them before they react. They take the battle to the gate of the enemy. In other words, they are always on the offensive side. That is the forceful man that I am talking about. And in this end time and in these last days, those are the kinds of people that God is raising. Because God is looking for people who are very aggressive. Very, very aggressive and resolute in their spirit concerning his agenda, concerning his purpose, concerning his will, and concerning his divine plan for these last days. And I believe beyond every reasonable doubt that all of you under the sound of my voice, you are enlisted into this forceful army. If you believe in shout, I believe. Amen. Hallelujah. So these are forceful army. These, these forceful men, they are men that connect humanity to eternity. They connect humanity to eternity. They are men who are not intimidated to say, thou sayest the Lord. They are men who don't want to be in the good books of any man. They just want to be in the good books of of the almighty God and also to do his will and his will only. Hallelujah. So the scripture that we just read, the Bible says that from the time of John the Baptist till now, from the time of John the Baptist till now, from the days of John the Baptist until now, it means that nothing has changed from the time of John the Baptist. The modus operandi is still the same. Nothing has changed from the time of John the Baptist until now. And what has not changed? The kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. Now, for the Bible to use the word forcefully advancing, the forcefully advancing is an aggressive term. It is a tenacious term. It is a militant term, which 
means that the kingdom of heaven cannot advance without using force. Without using force. There are so many of us under the sound of my voice. The reason why you have not seen the manifestation of your destiny. You have not seen the manifestation of the glory of God in your life. And you have not seen the manifestation of the prophetic word over your life and your destiny. And over the counsel of God concerning your life. Because you are too quiet. You are too reserved. And you, are, you coil into your shells. Listen. As long as you are a believer, as long as you are a Christian, as long as the hand of God is upon you, you will have resistance and you will have opposition from the kingdom of darkness. And the only way you can advance, the only way you can navigate your way through to your place of promise, to your place of destination, to the place that God has destined for you, is for you to be aggressive and also to be forced fool. That is why the Bible says that from the time of John the Baptist the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. Forcefully advancing. Which means that these forceful men that God is raising in this end time, they are not men that retreat. Because if you are going to advance the kingdom of heaven and advance God's agenda and purpose, you cannot retreat. You can't retreat. You must advance forward. You must progress. You must move forward. And for you to move forward, forward you got to be militant. You got to be militant. You must use all the weapons that is available to you in your arsenals. You must chase after every resistance, every opposition. You must chase after any spirit and any power that tries to stop you from advancing. And let me tell you, in this end time, this army that God is raising, they don't know anything. All they know is to advance the kingdom. They are forceful men. Forceful men that take nations. Forceful men that take territories, forceful men that advance the kingdom of God, forceful men that will retake anything that the enemy has taken, forceful men that will enter into the camp of the enemy and take whatever that they want. You know, this reminds me when David has fled from his palace because of the insurrection of his son Absalom against his throne. And the Bible says that they were, he was hiding in caves with his mighty men. And one of the days, David was so thirsty and there was no water in the wilderness. And in the rocks wherein he was hiding with his mighty men. And the Bible says that his mighty men looked at him and they said to him, that we will bring you water. And the only place they could find the water is the camp of the enemy. Where is the camp of the enemy? The Philistines camp. And the Philistines were an act enemy against David and against the nation of Israel. And so for them to enter into the Philistines camp and to get water for their king, it wasn't going to be easy. It wasn't going to be smooth. It wasn't going to be something that will be on the silver platter. Because immediately they enter into the enemy's camp, they will be identified. Why? Because they don't look like the enemy. You see, some of you, you have been trying to hide your identity. But you cannot, you cannot hide your identity because you don't look like the enemy. When they see you, they know you. You don't smell like the enemy. Your smell is different. Everything about you is different. And so they can easily identify you. And the Bible says that the mighty men of David entered into the camp of the Philistines and got David water from the camp of the Philistines. They were determined. They were purposeful. And they couldn't relent 
they pushed through, they advanced into the camp of the enemy and they got what they wanted. You see, most of us are waiting for somebody to give us what we wanted. That is why we have been waiting and waiting and waiting and we are not getting anything. But in this end time, if you have something that is mine, if you have something that I have a need of, I am not waiting for you to put it in my hands. I will come up against you and whatever you have in, my hand, in your hands that belongs to me, if I have to fight you spiritually, to take it, I will fight you spiritually to take it. If I have to invoke the blood of Jesus, if I have to invoke the name of Jesus, if I have to invoke the scriptures, I'm going to invoke the scriptures. If I have to take away your sleep and your comfort and your peace for that which you have in your hands to come into my hands, I am going to do it. That is why in this end time, forceful men are being raised to advance the kingdom of heaven, to advance the kingdom of God and to also advance the agenda of God. You can no longer sit down quietly to wait for things to happen for you. You can no longer just sit down quietly and fold your arms for things to happen for you. You must take a stand. You must rise up in the audaciousness of the Holy Spirit. You must rise up in the tenacity of the blood of Jesus Christ. You must rise up and speak the word and declare the word and decree the word and tell the enemy you can mess with other people but you cannot mess with forceful men like me you can mess with other families but you cannot mess with my family you can mess with other destinies but you cannot mess with my destiny you can mess with other relationships but you cannot mess with my relationship you can mess with other people's finances but you cannot mess with my finances you can destroy other people's ministry but you cannot destroy my ministry because if you dare i am coming after you i'm talking about forceful men somebody shout forceful men forceful men forceful men 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 that have fortitude forceful men they are men that have inner grits. They don't quit. They don't throw in the towel. They don't give up. They don't retreat until they have gotten hold of what they wanted. You know, I like the last sentence of the scripture projected for me, the verse 12. He said, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. The forceful men, they lay hold of it. It means that sitting down doing nothing, you will get nothing. Sitting down waiting for things to come to you, you will wait forever and nothing will come to you. Sitting down and waiting for some lucky breaks, you will wait for eternity. And nothing will change. Forceful men lay hold of it. In other words, forceful men lay hold of their destiny. Forceful men lay hold of their blessing. Forceful men lay hold of their advancement, promotion, their career. Forceful men lay hold of their health. Forceful men will not give room to the enemy to encroach on their terrain. Forceful men will not allow any demonic entity or any spirit or any power outside the kingdom to encroach or to invade or to penetrate into their domain and their domicile, into their jurisdiction. They will not allow it. They draw the red line. Listen, and let me tell you, this red line of these forceful men, they are not the kind that people cross and there are no consequences. They are not the one that people cross and then we find excuse not to punish them for crossing. No. This red line, when you cross it, 
if you are a human agent of the devil, just get ready because you will be buried. Not only will you be buried, you will be buried with everything that concerns you. There will be no trace of you. Your lineage and your descendants will be wiped out. Because these times and this season that we are, any human agent that comes in covenant with the devil to carry out the devil's agenda, to become a stumbling block and an hindrance and an obstacle to the advancement of the kingdom, when the judgment comes upon you, the judgment will not only come upon you, but the judgment of God will come upon you that will wipe your entire lineage just as he did to Haman. Haman was, wasn't the only one that was hanged in the gallows. Haman was hanged and every descendant of his was also hanged. The reason was because God didn't want anybody to rise up from the lineage of Haman and start fighting the Jews. And so he eliminated everybody. Listen, the times that we are in, that is why you have to be careful. You wicked men and wicked women that try to fight against the righteous you have to be careful because when you touch the righteous and you touch any child of God and you touch these forceful men and forceful women the judgment of God and the wrath of God and the anger of God will seize upon you and you will go to your grave speedily 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 Forceful men, forceful men, forceful men, forceful men that are gatekeepers. They stand at the gate and they tell the enemy, before you enter, you must pass through me first. Forceful men that stands at the door with their weapons strong, with their ammo in place. Their faces look like lions. They stand at the gates and they tell the enemy, this place is a no-go area. These are forceful men who have shut the mouth of lions. These are forceful men who have stopped satanic beasts and serpents and scorpions and powers. These are forceful men who have shut down satanic establishment and satanic rulers. These are forceful men whose voice is heard in the corridors of power and they work also in the corridors of power. I am talking about the end time army. This end time army, they have gone through the rudiment of the Holy Spirit. They have gone through the training of the Holy Spirit. They have been in the camp of the Holy Ghost. They know the voice of the chief commander. They hear it. They are sharp. They have lesser discernment. There is nothing that passes by them without them picking up. Let me tell you, any movement, they can pick it up. They, are, they have this lesser discernment. They are spiritual snipers. They are spiritual rangers, spiritual commandos, spiritual gorillas. They are spiritual navy seal. They can enter into any place that others dread to enter. As a matter of fact, they enter into places that angel dreads. They enter into places that other people don't try to get close. They can enter and kill the Osama Bin Landis of the kingdom of darkness. They are able to enter into the camp of the enemy and tell the devil, stay where you are and stay put and don't advance from where you are. If you advance from where you are, there will be ramifications. There will be consequences. There will be judgment. The wrath, the anger of God will consume you and come upon you and the devil oblige. Because he knows that it is not empty words. These last days, the forceful men, they don't just speak. What they say carries power. What they say carries authority. It's not empty threats. It's not empty threats. That is why I say, when I tell you that tonight you are dead, let me tell you, if you like, don't go and sleep. Stand with your eyes open all night, you will die. 
you are I'm telling you, you are gone. You that will be, it will be your last day on earth. You are gone. You are if you like, you can sit down and turn on the TV to keep you awake. Whilst you are watching the TV, your spirit will depart from your body. You can be on phone, on social media, trying to keep yourself alive. Whilst you are talking, whilst you are putting your pictures on the social media and you are chatting, your spirit will depart. This forceful man, when they speak, it stands. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. That is what David said. I am calm, I am cool. I am quiet. But when you mess with me, I will mess with you. When you trouble me, I will trouble you. When you try to put me at a tight corner, I will put you in a tighter corner. I am talking about forceful men. Forceful men. Forceful men that will not allow their lives to be toiled by the enemy. I'm talking about forceful men. Somebody say forceful men. Somebody say forceful men. Somebody say forceful men. When you see these forceful men, they are outside is a lamp, but they are inside is a lion. And so their looks can deceive you. But when you touch them, the lion will roar. When you touch them, the lion in the inside of them will rise. The lion in the inside of them. I am talking about forceful men. Ezekiel 13, the verse number 5. You have not gone up to break in the wall to repair it for the house of Israel so that it will stand firm in the battle on the day of the Lord. I will take it again. You have not gone up to the breaks in the wall to repair it for the house of Israel so that it will stand firm in the battle on the day of the Lord. You see, these forceful men, they are the repairers of the breach. They stand in the gap. They are always battle ready. They are warfare ready. They don't allow the enemy to take them on unawares. They don't allow the enemy to sweep them off their feet. They are always vigilant and they are always alert. Let me tell you, if you are going to silence the kingdom of darkness and the voice of the enemy, you must be vigilant and you must always be alert. You must be battle ready. Listen, the enemy doesn't attack you before you put your weapons on. Your weapons must always be on you. Your armor must be in place at all times so that when the enemy tries, you take a stand. You must be battle ready at all times. Your sword must always be drawn. Always, always, don't put the sword aside. Let that sword be always drawn. Somebody said the sword must be always drawn. <laughs> you see, the Bible says that the word of God is like two-edged sword. Two-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul. Joint and marrow, it judges all the thought and the intent of the heart. That is the word of God. So the word of God is the sword that we wield in the spirit when we are fighting against the forces of darkness. And so how are you battle ready? And how is your sword drawn at all times? Your sword is drawn at all, all times when you face peculiar situation opposing circumstances there is a scripture that rises
rises up in your spirit. What are some of the opposition and the resistance? When the enemy comes after you and the enemy tells you that you would die prematurely, you lift up your sword and you say, I shall not die, but I will live to declare the words of the Lord. And when the enemy comes after you through conditions and situations and circumstances and contrary winds and turbulence and adversity and storm is coming up against you on every side, uh, you, 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 you pick up your sword, you begin to wield your sword and you tell the devil that I cannot be ashamed. For the Bible says that them that put their trust in God shall not be ashamed. For the Bible says that he blesses the righteous and he surrounds the righteous with his favor as with a shield. Devil, you are a liar. For the Bible says that he taketh the poor from the dust and the better from the downhill and he sent them among princes that they might inherit the throne of glory. Satan, you cannot prevail against me. It doesn't matter what your tactics is and your strategy is and, and your plan is for it is written chariot and horses are prepared for battle but the victory comes from him. I don't care how you come up against me through the arm of the flesh. I am coming up against you for the Bible says for the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold and bringing down every thought and every imagination to the captivity to the obedience of Christ and so Satan I destroy I demolish I mangle your stronghold I declare that you are not going any further I shoot the sword of the spirit and I shoot the arrows of the spirit and I declare in the name of Jesus that your kingdom is annihilated your people are destroyed they are extinguished in the name of Jesus I am talking about drawing your sword drawing your sword drawing your sword drawing your sword the enemy is coming after you from every angle and, and, and from every side. The enemy is opposing, re resisting, throwing things at, at you and speaking curse words uh, against you like the prophet Balaam who has been hired by Barak to, to speak Yes, words against the children of Israel. You take a stand and you tell the devil that it is written. You will come in one way, but you will flee in seven ways. The reason is because this is a force for you to reckon with. And this is a formidable force. And you cannot penetrate because my garrison and my edge that is around me, they are not edges of wood or metal. They are not edges of bricks or clay. This edge is an edge of the Lord. For the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. And so the name of the Lord has surrounded me. The name of the Lord has surrounded my family. The name of the Lord has surrounded my marriage. The name of the Lord has surrounded my ministry. The name of the Lord has surrounded my finances. The name name of the Lord has surrounded my children, my siblings. Satan, you better back off because my God has promised me and he has said in his word, if God be for me, who can be against me? There is no witch that can be against me. There is no warlock that can be against me. There is no wizard that can be against me. There is no human being that can be against me. There is no curse words that can be against me there is no divination there is no enchantment there is no spell there is no demonic wishes and desires and impressions that can be against me because my God is with me for it is written I will not leave you nor forsake you for it is written ah, I am your shepherd I am your stronghold I am the horn of your salvation I am your God I I don't know who I came to talk to. I don't know who I came to speak to. But I know that tonight uh, I am speaking to forceful men and I'm speaking to forceful women uh, who will not let the devil take them for granted. Who will not allow 
the enemy to bully them who will not allow the devil to push them around let the forceful men arise let the forceful women arise take hold of your sword take hold of your weapons take hold of your weaponry take hold of the blood of Jesus take hold of the name of Jesus take hold of the word of God and tell the devil you cannot touch me I am untouchable you cannot mess with me because nobody messes with me I am the child of the most high God I am a servant of the most high God and the spirit of God is resident in the inside of me if you believe it lift up your hands and shout ororo ororo or you may be seated that's what I'm talking about I am talking about forceful men forceful men that will stand in the gap forceful men that will say Satan you cannot touch it you can't you can't touch it can you two of you come let me use you the two of you okay stand here stand there so the forceful men this is what they do I am the forceful man standing in between the two of them that is the child of God God forbid the agent of the enemy yes my my words carries power and so I have to use that before saying it I know who I am and I know what I carry so a child of God like I said God forbid an agent of the enemy I'm the forceful man so what is the assignment of the forceful man one to stand in the gap Standing in the gap means you are standing in between two people or two nations. What does the forceful man do? So the agent of the enemy tries to attack her. The forceful man stands in between and tells the agent of the devil, you cannot touch her. Before you touch her, you must first and foremost touch me. Since you cannot touch me and you cannot stand me, then you have to go back because I am not going to allow you to touch her. In other words, these forceful men, they stand in the gap not only to stop the works and the activities of the enemy, but they also stand in the gap to stop judgment from coming upon the children, the righteous one. That is the assignment of the forceful man. That is the assignment of the forceful man. They stand in the gap. In other words, if my breakthrough is here and the enemy has seen my breakthrough and the enemy want to steal my breakthrough as a forceful man, and as a forceful woman, I stand beside my breakthrough and I tell the devil, you try it and you will see. You dare and you will regret ever making an attempt to take that which belongs to me. That is what the forceful men do. They stand in the gap. That is why the forceful men and women, they are always battle ready. Battle ready. Why? Because they know that the devil and his kingdom, they are relentless. And they don't sleep. And they are attacking around the clock. Listen, you don't understand what I'm talking about. They are some of us. Not only getting up and praying, but sometimes when we are even asleep and our eyes is closed, and our flesh is in the darkest recesses of the day. Our spirit man is alive and still praying. Still pray. Because we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Less he gains advantage over us. And we are not giving room for the enemy to gain any advantage over us. I am talking about forceful men first forceful man in the bible somebody shout elijah 
Somebody shout Elijah. Turn your Bible to the book of Genesis. James. The book of James. Chapter 5, the verse number 17 and 18. James 5, 17 and 18. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Verse 18. Again, he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops. Elijah was a man just like us. Do you know what that means? It means that Elijah had weaknesses just like us. <laughs> the same blood that is flowing through us is the same blood that flew through Elijah. Just as I'm sweating, Elijah also sweated. He wasn't a super being. He was just like us. But the Bible says that as much as he was like us, he prayed earnestly. I, I want to repeat that. As much as Elijah was just like us, he prayed earnestly. That is the distinction. That is the difference between us and Elijah. Because the times that we are in, we are so lukewarm that we hate prayer. But the forceful men are men and women that knows how to pray. They are men and women that knows how to agonize in prayer, travail in prayer. They are men and women that knows how to go on their knees. They are men and women that knows how to stay in the presence of God. They are men and women who have made their abode, their domicile in the presence of God. For they know that the Bible says, the Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place. Of the most I go uh -huh. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my strong tower, my hiding place. You see, the forceful men understand that scripture. Making the habitation of the Almighty their dwelling place. Staying there until they are endued with power. Stay there until they have received the next direction and the next instruction. They don't do things by their own. They don't move on their own until they are asked to move. They don't do things until they are asked to do it. They are not men and women that impress others because they are not men places. They are God places. <laughs> that is why they are men and women of prayer. Prayer. Listen to me. When you know how to pray, when you become a praying machine, when prayer becomes your middle name, I am telling you, in your neighborhood, if there is any witch, without you even noticing or knowing that they are around, they will vacate. Just by your mere presence. Your mere presence. Your mere presence. One time I had a heavily encounter, and the angel of the Lord was telling me how you can influence either a city or a neighborhood or a nation. And the angel was telling me that there are some people, when they come to town, individuals, when they come to town, their influence overshadows an entire region or nation. Their influence. 
there are some that their influence is a city. There are some, their influence is a mile or two miles. There are some, their influence is like five miles, ten miles. So when the angel was sharing all this with me, I asked the angel, so how do I get such an influence? And he said, you can have such an influence when you stay in the place of prayer. In other words, if my influence is all over Hostel, the city of Hostel, it means that any time I am in Hostel, any demon or spirit or entity or territorial spirit or forces of darkness that is living within that radius must move out. If they don't move out, my sphere of influence will bend them. They must step out without me even instructing them or commanding them to get out because my influence cover wherever that they are. And that influence comes as a result of the power of prayer. The potency of prayer. Listen to me. You don't need words to pray. You don't need vocabulary or, uh, to pray or have diction to pray. You don't need grammar to pray. Because we are serving a God that made sound. And this God interpret sound. The other day David said, and I prayed and the Lord heard my prayer. That head there is not an articulate voice. It is not an eloquent voice. The head there simply means I made a screechy, squeaky sound. But he heard me. In other words, I said, mm, Jesus. I didn't speak any word. I didn't speak any grammar. I didn't use any vocabulary. But when I shout, mm, Jesus, the almighty God who created sound heard what I am saying through my sound. And this is what he heard. My son need divine intervention. My daughter need divine intervention. Oh, oh Jesus. When I shout, oh, oh Jesus, men don't understand. My family don't understand. My friends, my colleagues, my contemporaries don't understand. But Yahweh understand. Jehovah understand. Elohim, Adonai understand. The God of all flesh. Ah, the ancient of days, the rose of sorrow. The I am that I am. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob who created sound understands what I say. Because sometimes uh, you find yourself in situations. You find yourself in trouble waters. You find yourself in conditions. You find yourself in places where you don't know words to use. Uh, you can find the words uh, to, to use uh, to express how you feel in the inside. You can find the words to use to express the pain and, and the anguish and, and the agony and, and the lamentation. Uh, you can find the words. Uh, and so sometimes some of us, we just shout hey, Jesus uh, I feel something in the house. There is somebody under the sound of my voice. You have made a noise and the Lord said I have heard your noise you have made a sound and the Lord said I have heard your sound miracle is coming the breakthrough is coming the healing is coming I will fight your battles for you be still and know that I am God somebody shout yes the place of prayer the place of prayer the place of prayer there are times you find yourself in precarious situation and you are trying to explain to men and men don't understand you are trying to use the words to explain where you are and how you feel and they don't understand and sometimes you are looking for the word where is the word coming from I, 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 I want to I want to have the word that will talk 
totally and entirely and wholly express how I feel in the inside of me. No wonder the Bible says, for we don't know what we should pray as we ought. In other words, we feel some way, but we don't have the words to express and to say how you, we feel. And so the Bible says, and the spirit of God, who knows our hearts and knows our infirmity and knows what goes on in the inside of us begin to intercede with groanings somebody shout groanings somebody shout groanings the groanings there is not words the groanings there is not sentences the groanings there is not diction the groanings there is no vocabulary the groanings there is sound the groanings there is is noises and uh, you begin to make noises hey, oh jesus 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 that is the kind of prayer that hannah prayed when hannah went to shiloh the bible says that she was praying the bible says that her lips were moving but her voice was in her head uh, Eli the priest who didn't understand that kind and dimension of that prayer who had not prayed that kind of prayer the prayer of travail the prayer of making sound he, he saw Hannah and said Hannah you are intoxicated you are drunk this early morning and the woman said I am not drunk I am speaking to Jehovah through my noise out of the abundance of my heart I don't know who I came to talk to but you have come to Shiloh to make noise you have come to Shiloh to make sounds in his presence, in his abode, in his house, in his sanctuary. You are not living here without an answer. You are not living here without a breakthrough. You are not living here without a miracle. You are not living here without an open heavens. You are not living here without seeing the glory of God. Somebody shout Jesus. You may be seated. Elijah prayed earnestly. Elijah in his time and his day challenged the powers that be on Mount Camel. He said, let the God that answers by fire, let him be God. No wonder the Bible says that our God is a God of a consuming fire fire. Do you understand the word consuming? It means that anything that crosses his path, that thing will be burnt. A consuming fire. He challenged the authorities. He challenged the establishment. He challenged the rulership of his day and of his time because Israel has gone wayward just like the church. The times that we are in, the church has gone wayward. There are so many idolatrous things that are happening in the church. There are so many worldly things that are happening in the church. Sin has encroached into the church. Our lifestyle is sin. Our lifestyle is an abomination. Our lifestyle is enmity against God. Our lifestyle is damnable. It's abominable. It is detestable unto God. That is why we need people like Elijah who will bring the church back to the will of God. Who will bring the church back to divine alignment and compliance to the purpose and the agenda of God. People that will settle controversy. People that will command fire to come. People that will destroy the works and the activities of Baal and Baal prophet. Where are the Elijahs? Let the Elijahs arise. Let the Elijahs challenge the powers that be on Mount Camel. Where are the Elijahs that pray down fire? Where are the Elijahs that shut down the heavens? Where are the Elijahs that open up the heavens? I came to announce to somebody that the first move men and women, they are like the Elijahs. Somebody shout Elijah! Men of prayer. Men of prayer. Men of prayer. The forceful men are men of prayer. They, they are some of us. We have come this far 
because of prayer 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 we, 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 we are standing where we are standing because of prayer because of prayer because of prayer because right from the beginning we were targets of the devil uh, right from the beginning principalities and powers were assigned against us a whole demon was assigned against us if not for prayer if not for all nights if not for fastings if not for hideouts if not for searching the scriptures and, and quoting the scriptures and, and taking a stand and walking in holiness and righteousness and in the integrity of the world we would have been history but we are standing here because of prayer somebody shout prayer I feel something you know when I'm talking about prayer I can dwell here all day and start talking about dimensions and levels of prayer oh I feel something here there is somebody here the prayer anointing is coming upon you uh, the warfare anointing is coming upon you after tonight you will pray like you have never prayed before after tonight you will rise up in the middle of the night and you will take hold of the middle of the night you will rise up in the morning in prayer and take hold of the morning you will rise up in the afternoon and take hold of the afternoon you will make declarations you will make proclamations ah, in your prayer and it will stir you will make decrees and it will stand. you will make legislations and it will stand you will superimpose the executive decision of eternity and it will stand I don't know who I came to talk to but the prayer anointing is coming upon you wherever you are under the sound of my voice you are loose from prayerlessness you are coming to the place of intercession you are coming to the place of prayer you are coming to the place of groaning you are coming to the place of travail if you believe it shout I receive it you may be seated in the heavenly place the forceful men they are like the men of Amos prophet Amos the guy was hillbilly smelled like goat and sheep he wasn't good looking he just showed up and the bible says Amos the man from Tekoa somebody shout Tekoa and the Tekoa was in the city it was a village there are some of you, you are expecting to come from the city for you to be called. But God is bypassing the city and picking people from the village. That is a revelation for somebody. <laughs> there are some of you, you want to come to the city for God to call you. And God is walking and bypassing the city and going to the country. And picking people. Amos. From the village of Tekwa. Tekwa simply means the trumpet blast. Somebody shout the trumpet blast. The trumpet blast. The, trumpet blast. the guy just stepped out from Tekwa. When he stepped out from Tekwa, he started challenging the spiritual degradation of his time and of his days. Challenging the priest and telling the people that were opposing the move of God that get ready and meet your maker. Get ready and meet your maker. You think that it is only Pastor Grant who says that get ready to meet your maker. Go ask Amos. Turn your Bible to the book of Amos. Let me. Because sometimes you think that it is only me that says that. Amos 4.12. And when I tell you go and meet your maker, you will meet your maker. Believe me. You will meet him. Therefore, this is what? I will do to you. This is Amos speaking, the word of the Lord. Therefore, this is what I will do to you, Israel. And because I will do this to you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. Give me the King James. Therefore, that will I do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God. Prepare to meet thy God. The guy came 
out of the village by the name of Tekwa, meaning trumpet blast. And he started blasting the trumpet. Challenging the priest who were lukewarm. Challenging the priest who were wearing a priesthood garment. But they were canal. Started challenging them. You see, the times that we are in, there are so many people that are wearing clericals, but they are canal. They are fleshly. They are wetly. That is why we need the Amos that will rise up and challenge the spiritual degradation of the church. Forceful men like Amos. Who declare thou sayest the Lord. They are not professional. They are uncouthed. They are unpolished. They say exactly what the Lord says without making it nice to appeal to anybody. To appeal to anybody. They are the kinds that will go to President Donald Trump and say, stop lying. You like lying too much. Everything lies, lies, lies. Stop it. Stop it. We need men who will, who will speak the word. Your lies is troubling the whole nation. I love Donald Trump. The Lord instructed me when he came into power. An angel of the Lord appeared to me and told me, intercede for this man until he get out of office. I pray for him. But the lies is too much. It's too much. And we need men who will stand and say, President, stop lying for one speak truth in your life. So that this nation will advance. So that this nation will move forward. How can all of us be seeing white and you alone, you are saying he's black. We need the Amos of our time. Who will speak the word? Who will declare the word? Say, thou sayest the Lord. Turn away from your wicked and your evil ways. Otherwise, there is judgment that is coming to you. We need people like that. Forceful men. Somebody shout forceful men. Somebody shout forceful men. Somebody shout forceful men. We need people like that. They must rise up and they are rising up. Prophetic in time, amen. Prophetic end time, Amos. The priests were asking you, where are you coming from? You don't need to know where I'm coming from for me to declare the word of the Lord. Amen. By the way, who are you to ask me where am I coming from? Who designated you? Which woman gave birth to you? To ask me where am I coming from? Who are you? I like it when Blessed memory, the late Archbishop Benson in Dahosa, he said something, he said, when he started his ministry, people used to ask him, who are you? When he started making impact and waves and in rows, the who are you changed to how are you? <laughs> we need forceful men. Look at somebody and say, we need forceful men. We need forceful men. We need forceful men. Forceful men who will stand on national television and declare, Thou sayest the Lord. Declare that without compromising. Without compromising. They are without comp I, I remember a, a couple of years ago, there were two tele evangelists, very popular, very renowned, known everywhere, on all the screens. One of them was being interviewed. And they said, Larry King. Those days he was still on CNN. Yeah. Interviewing this guy. This guy. He is supposed to be called this guy. And, and cut off that man of God out of, out of that name attached. All, all kinds of people are calling themselves men of God and, and women of God. He is that guy. Somebody say that guy. So that guy was being interviewed and they asked him, don't worry, God is preparing me, you will be hearing me. 
I will be telling president, stop your foolishness and do the right thing on national television. And nobody can do anything. Nothing. Nothing. The other day, the Lord showed me something. I, I, ne I didn't want to frighten the church. So I have never said it. The Lord showed me because I have been coming up against the, the, the gay organization and their group and other things. Mm. I saw in the spirit, the Lord showed me there was a conspiracy to attack the church. Hey. To attack the church. I took a stand in the spirit and I said they should try. Mm. They would die one by one. Amen. And I will not stop talking about it. Hey. Because it's against the word and God frowns against it. I will never ever compromise the word. Never. Never ever. Yeah. You have no idea. There are true men of God in the land. I'm in this land, even though there are so many, there are true men of God who speak the word. I'm telling you, speak the word. What can you give me? What do you have? What? What can you give me? As I am standing here, I am too expensive. There is nothing that can buy me. Nothing. Nothing that can buy me. I don't want to be in your good books. I will preach the unadulterated. I am telling you, I want to say it again. Hey, God is preparing us. I'm telling you, we will come on national television. And we will tell all these guys who are influencing our children. And tell them, turn from your evil and your wicked ways. Otherwise, you will meet your creator. You will meet your creator. So this guy was sitting down. Larry King was interviewing this guy. I was sitting down watching. And then Larry King asked this guy, is Jesus the only way to heaven? And the foolish man answered this way, there are so many ways to heaven. So many ways to heaven. I am telling you, I was sitting down my fist just I wish I was standing oh, I would have punched his face and these are the kinds of people that are in the front line of Christianity in this nation no wonder the American church is dead and buried there are many ways what Jesus said I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except through me. And you are sitting there saying there are many ways. And every Sunday, the church is packed. Tens of thousands of people. What? That is why we need forceful men. Forceful men. Forceful men. Forceful men that to declare the way. That to refuse to be politically correct. Politically correct. Look at all these pastors. When there is a national program, they ask them to come and pray. They will stand there. And then they pray. And then they end like this, in the name of God. Stupid. You are foolish man. To stand there and pray and say in the name of God. Where is it written in the scriptures? Jesus said, whatsoever you ask the Father in, it got to be in the name of Jesus, not in the name of God. If you say in the name of God, you are giving a speech, not prayer. Poem, poem. You just recited a poem. It's not prayer. That is why 
We need forceful men. Forceful men. Oh, you watch. We will take this nation by storm. We are not giving room for the devil to operate. The devil will not take over this nation. They are righteous people in the land. They are people who carry the authority of God. They are people who are carrying the name of Jesus very well. They are people who are uncompromising. And we will not allow the devil to rule this nation and to take this nation. That is why forceful men are being raised. Forceful women are being raised. We will not allow. We will not allow that to happen. It most was challenging. The spiritual authorities in his day and in his time, they were confused. They didn't know what to do. Some of them went into hiding. I'm talking about forceful men and women. Forceful men and women. There is this servant of God I used to have so much regard for. I used to. But this individual just turned me off. And the reason why this individual turned me off, anytime this individual calls me, all this individual talks about is money, money, money. Oh, the Lord is going to bless us with money. Oh, the Lord gave me revelation concerning money. Oh, there is a wealth transfer to the church. And so is that your only conversation? Money, money, money. Thank God that when they made cell phone, they put something in it called block. I don't want those kind of conversations. It doesn't inspire me. It doesn't motivate me. It doesn't do anything. Come, man of God, he calls me bishop. Bishop, we need to have a financial prosperity conference. We need to teach the kingdom people about financial prosperity and, and, and teach them. Listen, if you walk in the will of God, abide by his word, and walk in the integrity of the word. Let me tell you, you don't need to even ask for prosperity. Prosperity will come. If you don't understand, read Deuteronomy 28. If you abide by the Lord, these blessings shall. It's simple. Very simple. Very simple. Always talking to me. And this individual, forefront. He's at the forefront of the Christian door. In America, not once have I received a call talking about prayer, revival, the state of the church. Always money. Every time he's giving me prophecy, ah, I see money transfer. I don't want any money transfer. I don't want it. I'm not looking for it. I'm not asking for it. Don't be giving me those kind of go, those kind of uh, uh, cow and bull story of a prophecy. I reject it. Oh, son, I, I see somebody somebody giving you house keys. Who told you that I don't have a roof over my head? How many houses can I sleep in at a time? How many? And even in one house, I can sit, sleep in two rooms. And so God is not going to give you anywhere that he is about to give me a house. But because we are so much materialistic conscious, convertiousness, we are so worldly. Our thought patterns and mindset 
It's all about what we can collect, what we can accumulate, what we can add. Oh, we are not thinking about the state of the church and the souls that are perishing and how we have to carry out the agenda, the end time agenda of God. That is why God is pushing all those kind of people aside and raising people who have passion for the things of God. Passion for the things of God. Passion for the things of God. I'm talking about forceful men and women. Forceful men and women. I'm talking about force who are aggressive for God. They are unfailing love for the things of God. They are sincere in everything that they do. They are no ulterior motives. They are no uh, uh, hidden agendas. Their heart is open. They are open book. They are transparent. There is nothing translucent or opaque about them. They are clear. What you see is what you get. Those are the kinds of people God is raising in this end time. To shake kingdoms, to shake nations, to shake the political arena. Shake it, shake it until nothing is left. Shake it. Uproot the uprootables that has not been planted by God. Shake the shakeables. Clear them. Bend them into ashes. Today, the church, we come to church and it has become like a normal routine. You know, normal. Oh, I come to church. Praise and worship. First intercess intercessory prayer, 30 minutes, an hour. Praise and worship, 30 minutes or 45 minutes. A preacher comes on 45 minutes an hour. Offering time. Benediction. We are going home. Every day like that. When are we going to have Holy Ghost interruptions? Where our program changes. Where are we going to have heavily interruptions? Where our agenda and traditions are put aside. Say, so God, do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Move as you want to move. Have your way as you want to have your way. Touch us as you want to touch us. Transform us as you want to transform. Deliver us. As you want to deliver us. When are we going to have services like that? When? When? But we are so carnal. We are not spiritual at all. I'm <laughs> we have the form. Having the form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Having the form of godliness. It, if it is a form, then it means it's, a, it's fake. It's a lie. It's cosmetic. It's a shadow of the reality. It has no substance. Having the form. Hypocrisy. Having the form of godliness but denying the power thereof. That is what we have in the church. That is what we have in the church. So when God starts using somebody, breaking the traditions and the protocols of the church, the gurus of the church will rise up. The gurus of the church will rise up. Where are you coming from? When we were, we were, were you? When we were, we? Where were you? Do you know how prayer city started? 
Before the church started, we were with Pastor Grant. We are the pillars and the foundations. You, 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 Johnny, you just. You just came around. And, and, and you want to cause a revolution. We will oppose you. We will fight you. This is the tradition. This is how it goes. You see, that is how religious people speak. Religious people. In this church, there cannot be religious people. I will cast that demon out of you. Religious people. Really? And so, we don't allow God to move the way he's supposed to move. Because the people adore, they are not forceful men and women. These forceful men and women, they are not religious. They are spiritual. The most dangerous spirit that is fighting the church is religious spirit. I'm telling you, the most deadliest spirit beside the spirit of Jezebel is religious spirit. One of these days, I'm going to treat it as a whole topic. Religious spirit. Religious spirit. Religious spirit. It looks like it is the real thing, but it is not. <laughs> we call it kerosene reviver. Somebody say kerosene reviver. You know how kerosene reviver operates? If you put it on the charcoal, it goes, it's gone. With this, it's Gone. Gone. We don't need kerosene reviver. We need the burning bush. Burning bush. Burning for eternity. It cannot be quenched. That is what we are looking for. And let me tell you, in this end time and in these last days, God is using the forceful men and women to establish an unquenchable fire. Rise on your feet. I will continue tomorrow. Amen. I am telling you, Georgia here, it cannot be the capital city of Gay. What? With you and I here. And they will be calling this place the capital city of Gay. You either change and be straight. Or we cast out that demon out of you. How can you be a man and say I'm a woman? Which voice are you hearing? Look at somebody and say, which voice are you hearing? That day will never ever come where somebody will come to me and say, Pastor, I have found my life partner. And I said, come and introduce your life partner to me. Let me see your life partner. And you bring the same sex. You will be shocked. You will be shocked. I will slap you before I deal with the spirit. Because for you to even do that to me, you have insulted me. That is disrespect. I will not allow anybody to disrespect me. You come and you bring the same sex. Pastor, we are looking for a date where you can put us together. I will kill you, both of you, eh, and bury you. I'm telling you, if you have any ideas, don't even try it. You are in the wrong church. Wrong church. I'm telling you, you are in the wrong church. <laughs> in the wrong church. This church, the government cannot control it. You know the reason why? I have not collected any grant from the government and I'm not collecting any dime from the government whereby the government start telling me what to say and what not to say. I don't owe the government one dollar. One dollar. 
And the constitution of the church says that marriage is between a man and a woman. And so when you show up and I slap you and you take me to court, I will carry the constitution of the church to court and I will read it. Don't even think about it. Let the gayness leave you now. Hallelujah. The voice you are hearing is not God. It's not God. I'm telling you. Atlanta, Georgia, it will change. Amen. It will change. I'm telling you, that is why we are here. Why do you think that God brought you here? You think God just brought you here to occupy space? You are here to effect a change. To bring transformation. To bring revival. Ah. It will be an embarrassment. Somebody will say that the city of Pastor Grant is the capital city of gay. What? Never. Never. If there is no revolution in this city and in this state where people come to divine alignment with the word of God and they get out of their foolishness, even when my assignment is over, I will tell God, please give me more time. Give me more time. What? Ah, for you to be in this, then they are calling and then you, you say, oh, where do you go? Georgia. So, hey, your place. Atlanta, hey, your place. Hmm. Your place. Your place. Your... Listen, that is why we need forceful men. Forceful, aggressive men and women. Not whimsicals. Everything, they go into hiding. Everything. You know? Let me show you the difference between Nigerians and Ghanaians. You see, when a Nigerian man said, you will see, you will truly see. When a Ghanaian tell you, you will see, and it is time to see, he will go into hiding. Mm. <laughs> it's true. You go into hiding. You see, the tribe where I came from in Ghana, I will tell you something. We have a character. When you are beating us and we are on the floor and you are punching us, damaging our face, we won't keep quiet. We won't beg you to get up. This is what we usually say. When I get up, you are dead. Yeah, that's my tribe. When I get up, you are dead. Look at how stupid. So if you are telling me that if I get up, I'm dead. Then guess what? You are not getting up. <laughs> and meanwhile, when we get up, we won't do anything. We will take off <laughs> and run. That is one of the things that have helped Ghanaians. That is why the nation is stabilized. No fighting, nothing. And there is no uh, tribal war and other things. Because they will say it, but they can't act. But Nigeria say it and get ready. <laughs> it's going to happen. I like aggressive people. Yeah. That, that kind of nature about Nigeria. I like it. I like it. I'm talking about forceful men. When I tell you I'm coming to your house at night to kill you, I will show up. At if, when you lock the door, I will pass through the door. I will kill you. The Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. If you make a witch live, you will suffer the rest of your life. Amos said, get ready. Meet your maker. How do you meet your maker? You must die. You are here praying cute, nice, polished prayers. You're always looking gentle, lady, with your cat walk. Where has he landed you? Where has he taken you to? You sleep. They will be slapping you on your own bed. Suffocating you on your own bed. Sitting on your neck. And then you are gasping for breath. <gasps> you know? All these things is nonsense. My own bed. Me, my bed. You are coming to press me. In my own house, 
in my own bedroom on my eye. But the thing is this. If you are not forceful, Satan bullies you. I've had people who, who have come to me and said, Pastor, they were suffocating me. I was trying to mention the name of Jesus. I couldn't. I, said, ah, I, I, I couldn't. <laughs> what? <laughs> what pressing me? I'm trying to mention Jesus. I couldn't. Who are you? Where did you come from? Who even created you? Before you show up at the door, I have crippled you already. All the bones in your flesh suddenly will melt. It will melt. And I will make sure that you stay there whilst I sleep. The following day, I deal with you. Hey, learn how to pray corrosive prayers. Acidic and corrosive. Look at somebody says acidic and corrosive. You know what? Sit down. Let's take offering and let's get out of here. Thank you for watching this message. For more information about this message or the ministry, call us at 770-941-1934 or visit us online at eagleschapel.com.